discuss to the working notes. I'll jump in and then I'll see where we're at with our agenda and pass it on to the next person. We've got quite a few upcoming events for the rest of the year. Uh, one thing coming up next month's CI working group call will conflict with the Open Networking Summit in Antwerp. So we will, will not be meeting on Tuesday the 24th on this call. I'll reach out to the CNCF uh, event folks to remove it from the community calendar for next month. Also next month, it looks like there's a GitLab Commit Summit in Brooklyn, New York. And it was recently announced that Dan Kahn will be presenting it on how good is our code. So that's on Tuesday, September 17th. If anyone will be joining, be sure to check that out. Add that to your schedule. Um, in September, about four weeks from now, is the Open Networking Summit in Europe. Just a train ride from Brussels and Taylor from Volk and the CNF Testbed Initiative will be leading a tutorial driving telco performance with the cloud native network functions. Oh, great. In October, looks like there's the ARM Developer Conference in San Jose. Ed, you'll be there? Yes, I will be there. Um, we don't have a booth of our own, but I'll be hanging out in one or more of the ARM booths, uh, TBD. Yeah, and Philip will be there as well, Philip from, from ARM. So I, I sent you a note earlier, listen up about, about that and potential for, for actually uh, having some communication or blog around that, just giving a status of where CI, CNCF CI is at. And so at least we can uh, highlight that during the event as well. Oh, that sounds great. And we will have a, a booth and uh, so actually if somebody uh, from Vulk or others want to uh, come by the booth and, uh, you know, at, at some point uh, answer questions or whatever, that's very welcome. We, we can maybe arrange something around that too. Sure thing. Thank you so much. I'll take a look at the email and see what we can pull together. Sure. Um, and then let's see, there was the, the CFP, the joint CFP that we put together for KubeCon North America. And I haven't heard back if it has been accepted. I think that the team's planning to give CFP announcements the first week of September. So maybe a week from now we'll know if that's been accepted or not. And Open Source Summit in France, it looks like Priyanka from GitLab is doing a keynote. And uh, I haven't heard, I'll check in to see if any of the work done with GitLab and CNCFCI may be highlighted at all. So I'll be available to help with that. There are some co-located events at KubeCon North America in November. There's a new network service mesh con that has opened up. It's sponsored by the network service mesh community and they have a CFP window open until February 13th. If anyone on the call is using network service mesh, please feel free to submit a CFP to share your findings with the group. It's open until Friday the 13th and they're also looking for sponsors. And it looks like there's also a co-located event, the MEC Hackathon, hosted at Qualcomm. Yeah, I added that, um, Lucina. It's uh, something networking focused as well, and which is uh, happening alongside or around the KubeCon. So just to flag it here, if anyone has uh, has particular interest to join or want to advertise, that's uh, that's uh, welcome too. Thank you for that. That could be interesting for the CNF testbed initiative folks. Yeah. I think it's free to attend. It's just a registration on a wiki page, but I don't think there is any, any particular requirement beyond that. 
The other event that I would put co-located with KubeCon is Cloud Native Rejects, which is a conference for papers that were rejected by um, KubeCon. Um, the call for papers really is to uh, wait for CNCF to finish their uh, process and then rejects will be open. Thank you, Ed. Is that typically held on the weekend before that you know of? Yeah, it's uh, November 16th through 17th. So it's a, it is a weekend. Um, um, there are tickets. Uh, pricing is reasonable. Um, I'll paste the URL in the chat. Great, thank you. Yeah, interested to see what their schedule is um, after the KubeCon official schedule is published then and interested to see what we can see before KubeCon as well. That's great. All right. I'll share that in the meeting notes as well. So the CNCFCI team is working on a few initiatives here, and we're nearing the finish line on many of them. So the first one we're working on is the CI refactor. We want to um, move towards a more Kubernetes way of doing things, and so we are implementing support to use KubeSpray to provision Kubernetes on the CNCF CI dashboard. And we've um, decoupled the hardware provisioning stage with the Kubernetes provisioning stage, which were previously in one step. We've decoupled that so that they're now modular, two steps. And we're working on a CLI tool to help support using both KubeSpray now and using Kind later, as we feel there are use cases that would support um, either one. And we're going to start with KubeSpray. So that's what we have going on now is creating a CLI provisioning wrapper and creating a plugin for KubeSpray to provision Kubernetes onto the CNCF CI system. After we have KubeSpray in place, we'll be able to update the Kubernetes release version on the dashboard to the latest version. And um, it'll be easier going forward to keep that in line, keep that up to date with the latest. And we're also going to be discontinuing use of the quote unquote cross cloud Kubernetes provisioning tool. So we'll be using the new way of provisioning in place of the cross cloud way. And then later, we'll be creating a kind plugin so that we can support those use cases that would be beneficial for using kind instead of KubeSpray. Here's a visual representation of the CI infrastructure refactoring. Got stage one, the bottom machine provisioning. If we have multiple machines, we use KubeSpray. And if we have a single packet machine, we'll use kind. And both will run kubeadm to bootstrap the Kubernetes cluster. Does anyone on the call want to add any information about where we are, where we're going with the CI refactor? How long a task is that planned for? The refactoring? How long do you, does, do you plan that to, uh, to take? It seems like we are about 80% there. Uh, we were hoping to have it by the end of August. So I would say within the next two weeks. Okay, that's great. Another large epic that we've been uh, working on oh, is adding. I, sorry, I was muted. Right? I was trying to respond. I didn't realize uh, y'all couldn't hear me. Um, did, uh, did that cover everything, or did you want me to add anything else about the status? No, I think that's okay. It was just to have a, a rough idea of uh, 
of uh, how, how big a piece of work that was to actually uh, uh, complete that. Yeah, the hardware provisioning um, is working uh, as expected right now. And I think we're going to be able to put that in place and the, the Kubernetes infra provisioning portion is uh, also pretty close at this point. We have the different components for how we want to run KubeSpray, and now it's um, the, the part that's going to integrate between the hardware infrastructure and then run KubeSpray and specifically run it as a plugin so that we can add uh, Kind and other stuff later. And the interface for provisioning looks the same as far as like a de declarative configuration. But we'll, we should, like Lucina said, in the next couple of weeks, I think we'll be done and, and have that in production replacing uh, cross-cloud. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. The other large effort we are working on for the cncf.ci dashboard is to add support for external contributions so that it can be easier for more people to maintain and add new CNCF hosted projects onto the CNCF CI dashboard. We've started with Linkerd2 as the new project to add. It's an incubating project and it uses Travis CI. And we've refactored um, many of the components to al allow for that collaboration. So already complete has been changing where the project details are retrieved and how someone could add project name, logo, caption to the dashboard, uh, changing how the release details are retrieved, stable and head, and also changing how the build status is retrieved for CNCFCI. And that's where we are now with the build status, the build status badge on the CNCFCI dashboard. It currently retrieves the build status that is created by the CNCFCI platform. And it's, so it's internal to the CNCFCI system. And what we're working on now is uh, creating a proxy so that we can retrieve the published build status and the published build artifacts from the project's CI system. In this case of Linkerd2.x, they're using Travis CI. So we're creating a Travis CI plugin that will allow us to get the build status directly from Travis. And we'll continue doing that. And we will like to put um, linkerd2.x onto the dashboard on production right after we get that build status. So here's a quick mock of what we mean. We want to replace linkerd with linkerd2.x per the project's request as an incubating project using Travis CI. And we expect to see the project details, the release names, and the build status from their CI system. We expect the deploy and test to be NA after that first um, release to production. And then we'll continue on retrieving the build artifacts that we'll be able to use in the deployment phase deploying both uh, Linkerd stable and head to the selected test environment configuration, be it on Kubernetes stable, Kubernetes um, head, or x86 or ARM architectures. So like with the CI refactoring, I'd say we're nearly there and we hope to have Linkerd 2.x on production in the next week or two as well. Any questions or comments? Taylor, would you like to add anything? Um, we're, right now, we're trying to make it language independent for the plugins. Um, is where we're going for this iteration. So potentially, if, if someone wanted to write a plugin and any language as long as you follow the the API that we have to integrate with the CI proxy. 
um, it wouldn't matter. And um, ideally, we can have contributions for the not only adding projects, but the plugins themselves it probably would be to add a specific project. But um, I know we've had um, some conversations about drone um, being used as a one of the CI systems. Uh, I've, I was hearing a lot about specifically good ARM support. So that would be one that could be added. And if folks are interested in doing that, that'd be appreciated. And documentation for adding plugins and how it integrates will be part of what will be released when this uh, the Linkerd2 uh, is finished. Thank you. We're also iterating on an idea to expand our current test environment dropdown, which is currently one dropdown that shows the Kubernetes releases as well as the architecture options. And we have this mock that we're going to move forward on that uses radio buttons to show all the possible configuration options at a glance. So we're putting um, Kubernetes stable and head on the screen, and we're also putting x86 and ARM on the screen. Since we have um, two options per choice, it, um, it makes sense to show it all on the screen. Once we have more than three, perhaps we may go back to the drop-down styling, but we're going to give this a try and see how it affects usability of the CI dashboard. The stable will be the default and x86 will be the default. So when you first load CNCF CI, this is the view that you'll see. And then someone will be able to change it from stable to head. And then the content on the screen will change depending on the configuration that's been selected in the test environment section. So this is in design now, and we expect to have it in implementation in the next couple of weeks. Hi, Luciana, this is Ed. Um, I think I opened up an issue regarding uh, stable URLs for that would reflect a link to your choice of things. Yes. That for this? That is definitely, they go hand in hand. So it, this um, UI will make it pretty obvious how we should implement the stateful URLs, whereas the dropdown, things were hidden, and so they were a little bit more complicated. So I think that um, the stateful URL enhancement and this UI enhancement will make a big difference. Uh, we'll have to check on um, planning that out. I think as soon as we get Linkerd2 added and the CI refactoring, then we'll be able to take a look at the stateful URLs and see the level of effort for that enhancement. Thank you. Thank you. Software updates, some maintenance ongoing. And what's next? So after we get Linkerd2.x with the build status badges, then we'll start on the deploy status badges. We'll retrieve the build artifacts from their Travis CI system and use those to deploy Linkerd2 to the selected test environment configuration. We'll also make an enhancement um, for the MVP of the build status badge for Linkerd2 the badge, when you click on it, will go to an internal build on GitLab, on the CNCFCI GitLab platform. And what we want to do in the next iteration is to take the user to the project's Travis CI build. So instead of coming to CNCFCI, it will go out to TravisCI.org for Linkerd2 and show that job that either passed or failed or is running. We'll also be able to add more projects. So we're gonna be adding more incubating projects to CNCFCI. And we'll be adding them in the incubating levels in order in which they join CNCF and they use Travis CI as their individual CI system. 
And we'll start with the x86 architecture support for Jaeger, Vitesse, and Nats. In the future, we'll be adding plugins to um, other CI systems. I believe Circle CI will be the next one that we target. And we currently do support Jenkins for ONAP. We'll want to iterate on that. If any other incubating CNCF CI hosted projects are on Jenkins, then we'll take a look at um, updating that plugin as well. We'll be at KubeCon North America in San Diego, November 18th through 22nd. There'll be a CNCF CI intro, as well as a separate deep dive on how to add a CNCF hosted project to CNCF CI. And that'll be based on our Travis CI external integration plugin. So you can find us on GitHub, it's the CrossCloud CI repo, or on Slack, cncf-ci. You can also join the mailing list, the CNCF CI public mailing list, and these calls are usually every fourth Tuesdays. We'll be not meeting in September. And any questions, feedback, suggestions for CNCF CI at this time? Thank you so much. I'll pass it over to Taylor to talk about refactoring the CNF testbed and plan CI testing on packet. Lucina? Yes. Can I ask that we put the uh, dates for the future monthly meetings on this calendar as well? I know we, I know it's fourth Tuesday, but um, if we could throw those dates on our document calendar, that would be helpful too. Oh, sure. Under upcoming events? Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you. I'm ready to share my screen. <clears throat> Thank you, Taylor. All yours. All right. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> we're in the middle of a pretty big refactor on the CNF test bed. While also trying to continue adding use cases. <clears throat> um, we're trying to take advantage of the efforts on the CNCFCI side for splitting the hardware and um, Kubernetes cluster provisioning. And that's a good fit for what we're doing, uh, specifically being able to have hardware that's ready and um, reuse that same hardware for the tests that are run on the CNF test bed uh, would be one of the main things. And also uh, being able to provision different uh, types of systems and everything else uh, since we do OpenStack. <clears throat> and um, so as soon as those are ready, we're planning on moving, uh, migrating over. Ideally, we can get some help around the OpenStack uh, deployment itself and the Chef deployment that was originally used is uh, pretty brittle. It's broken uh, quite a bit and we've had to keep updating little bits over and over. And so there's a desire to move to something like OpenStack Helm or Cola. Uh, so if we can uh, get the right helper on that, we'll probably be making that migration. And I think that's going to be a better fit for what people are wanting. Uh, the bigger effort is around uh, the 
use cases and the setup that runs on top of the platform. And that's uh, consisting of the network functions themselves, which could be in VMs or containers. Some of them may be um, old school, big monolithic, or ideally they're moving towards using cloud native principles um, and actually being CNS. And then any type of workload um, the, the cluster, OpenSAC, Kubernetes, the workload infra extensions or changes. Uh, if you want to swap out OVS for OpenStack with VPP vSwitch or uh, whatever you're wanting to do, uh, their NSM uh, has components for doing the networking. DanM uh, has different pieces. So there's all these different parts. And we want to make it where that's part of the configuration that's easier for folks to use. Uh, one of the events mentioned was um, talk, uh, tutorials and stuff. Uh, so we want to make it easy for people to come in and reuse this. And not only can they understand it, but we can use all of this in a way that we're confident that it could run in, in CI uh, directly. So breaking all of these downs, um, what we end up with is something equivalent to, if you're looking at the Kubernetes side, it's probably something like a Helm chart with dependencies for all the separate pieces and how they fit together. And then uh, if you're using, say, NSM, then it has its own configuration for how to connect service chains. But all of those pieces kind of fit together. And then on the CI side, what we're looking at is we haven't been doing this primarily because of the resource utilization, uh, running CIs on um, running tests on commits. But as we're creating these specific use cases that people are interested in and, and knowing like what are the metrics and what are we seeing over long running um, cycles of doing this again and again, we'd like to have a set of use cases that are of the most interest and have them running either on commit for any changes in those areas or on some type of regular schedule basis. So the, the main problems with this, so this is all in part packet and the main problems are any type of provisioning failures, whether we're seeing some networking thing or a, a timeout or issue with the packet API or if something happened with the cluster provisioning, so trying to get all of that to a point where um, we're comfortable as part of the other efforts for the refactor. And then um, the overall length of time for doing this and then looking at how many commits, if you're doing this uh, on a regular basis or how we're gonna do it in the system. And then, um, an alternative would be a set of machines that are long running. I don't know why my access expired. Um, and that's something probably like to talk with Packet and get some ideas, or if uh, anyone else has some ideas on stuff where we're building out the, the whole clusters um, for these different use cases, we can probably clear them, the machines out to rerun another use case in the best case scenarios. But at a minimum, there's a large set of machines and, and what would be best uh, for a place like Packet or these longer running CI uh, processes where it's taking up a lot of resources and kind of the balance between the teardown and, and, and setup. So if people have some feedback on that, especially Ed, anybody at Packet, what would work best for y'all, try to take that into consideration as we're moving towards this. Yeah, I'd be happy, uh, Taylor, to talk through this in, in whatever detail. Um, there may be things that we can do to reduce setup teardown times, especially. Um, and I know that there have been uh, provisioning failures that um, I continue to want to get to the bottom of those um, as they happen. 
Yeah, and I appreciate that. Y'all have been a great help on the specific failures and stuff. I think a lot of the teardown time may have to do with the machine types. When we're using those larger machines, they take a lot longer than, say, the X1 smalls or any of the smaller instances. The new networking, the Intel networking into extra large and stuff. Those are the ones where if those are spinning up, ideally we're releasing them, but figuring out how that's going to work uh, would be great. And if any other folks have experience on that to tie in. Yep. I and think uh, we'll see a big can, improvement. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If we can um, benchmark cycle times for that um, and collect sort of nominal numbers on distribution, we can start to stare at what's taken so long, so. Sounds good. That's really it um, for me right now. I think we'll have a lot more once we get through the refactor and start seeing some of the pieces that go in place. Thank you for that update, Taylor. Does anyone have any other items they'd like to discuss in today's CI working group call? Very good. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was great chatting with everyone and just a reminder, Next week's, next month's call will conflict with ONS, so we'll remove that from the community calendar, and we shall meet again on October 22nd. Excellent, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good Cheers. afternoon.